Okay, so let's start because we have a lot to cover and I'm going to give you some hints for the final and I will make a video maybe tomorrow if I have time um, that will uh, I will go over what's going to be on, on the final. I can tell you right now that you're going to have a few problems with work energy. Okay, the work energy theorem. You know, the, the work equals change in kinetic energy, conservation of energy, okay? So a few of those. Now, I am missing two units. So one unit is easy, it's called rotational dynamics. That's what you see here, those equations there. And there is another unit which is very interesting, and it's called rotational dynamics, and it's important for uh, those going into mechanical engineering, physics majors. So I, I will do um, a video, okay, uh, that will cover that, but it's not going to be on, on the final. You said rotational dynamics as well. The what? You said they're both called rotational dynamics. Did I say what? <laughs> Dynamics, right? No, uh, oh, I said dynamics twice, not kinematics. Okay, you have rotational kinematics that does not involve torque, and then you have rotational dynamics here that does involve torque. Okay, so this is very important for mechanical engineering, maybe civil engineering, and uh, physics major. So I will make a video just for you, for the physics enthusiast, but it's not on the final. Is that clear? So again, on the final, expect problems about war, conservation of energy, and as we go along, I will let uh, you know more. So very quickly before... So it's not... Yes, it is cumulative, but because I don't cover in class rotational dynamics, okay? What's supposed to come next, rotation. It's not on the final, but I will make a video for the people who need that. Do you understand? Otherwise, yes, it's cumulative. I will make a video to tell you what's going to be on the final. Can you like one incline? Like no more than one. One about what? Incline plane. You don't incline need plane? One. But there is one. Just one. Just one. Okay, just to make sure uh, about torque. Let's, let's just review a last time the three definitions. So unlike force, a torque is always relative to a point, right? So relative to an axis of rotation. So for example, if I have, let's say this is my point here. So this is my fulcrum, say, so, but it could be any point. And let's say I have a force um, in this direction there and I want to find the torque relative to the point, let's call that point A, due to the force F. Okay, so the first thing you do, and I'm going to go quick, okay, because we already talked about that, but I know some people got confused. First thing you do, you connect here, yeah, the axis of rotation to the point where the force is applied, and you call that R. Okay, so that will be the first step. So then you have three ways to do it. You can use the cross product. Okay, so that will be the formal way to define torque. But in this class, you don't have to worry about it. Okay, so if you want to know more about it, you just uh, go back to the first unit of your book and, and you can look at it, you know, you can study it, but it's not. You don't have to worry here. The magnitude, the magnitude of that cross product will be the magnitude of R times the magnitude of F times the sine of the angle between those two vectors. And let's say this is the angle theta. How can we find that angle here? You have to take those two vectors, so it's a review, and you attach them by their tail, okay? So you have one vector R here. You remember a vector can be cut and paste, 
as long as they keep the same magnitude, the same direction, it will be the same vector. And then you have that angle theta. Okay, so that's the formal definition. You don't care about it for, for the exam. So the one that you care about will be, you have two ways to do it. One way is to say that it's gonna be the perpendicular component times R. So what is the perpendicular component? That will be, uh, you see, F has two components. It has a perpendicular component here, perpendicular to R, and here it has a parallel component. This one we don't care because it's not helping with the twist. So we only use this one. That's one way to do it, okay? The other way to do it is to use the lever R. And that you will need today, okay? Because for some problem, it's easier to use the lever arm. So that will be the torque due to F relative to that point here will be the lever arm times F. And those here are equal to each other. So how to find the lever arm? Again, you extend F. So we call that the line of action. So you extend it and then you go back to here. And what you do is you project that point here, which is called the perpendicular distance. That is the smallest distance between the point and the line. Is that clear? So this is called lever arm. Very important for engineers. Uh, okay, not computer computer science engineers, but the other. Okay, is that clear? I just wanted to uh, specify this, yes. In terms of the torque equation that you put in, it's the lever arm arm times the force. Yes, lever arm times the force, or perpendicular, the, the perpendicular component times R. It's the same thing. It's gonna give you the same thing. That means that here you're going to have, a, a, if you have a sign here, you're going to have the same sign here. If you have a cosine here, we have a cosine. It's going to be the same thing. And you solve it. What do you solve? But you solve using trig. Yeah, trig. Yes. Okay. Like, uh, for example, here, uh, the angle, let's say this angle here is uh, theta. Okay, so this is the angle theta here. No, I'm going to call it alpha. Okay, so that means the perpendicular is what? It's going to be a, a F cosine. Yes, thank you. So here it's going to be F cosine. Okay, and here that same angle is going to be here. Okay, so it's going to be R cosine. Okay, so we get the same thing. So in that case, it's going to be F R cosine. And if you do that, you're gonna find also sine, and then it's gonna be pi over two plus alpha, which is cosine. Okay, because you remember sine of um, whatever plus 90 degrees, it's gonna be the cosine. Okay, because they are complementary. Okay, let's move on. Check. Okay, so that here, I improved that slide because I'm trying to do everything in the nutshell. That comes from that website here, it's called Hyperphysics. It has all the domain of physics, right? And all the equations. They even, they even have like some simulation where you can enter numbers and solve some problems. So it's a highly recommended website. So here you have everything linear, everything rotational. So for example, here, angular position, okay, will be in radian. So you start from here, okay? So let's say this is uh, zero, do you agree? Okay, the, the bicycle wheel was too heavy. So this is zero. And if I go here, what's gonna be the position now in radian? It's gonna be pi over two, okay? So one radian, one radian is about 53 degrees, no, 58 degrees, right? So if I go all the way, how much, how many pi's? Two pi, but I don't have to stop at two pi. I can go 
one and two and three. So how many pi? Six pies in regions. So you can define the angular displacement. Okay. So how do you go from here to there? There is a bridge. So you see that the distance here, it's called the arc length, but it's not a displacement, okay? Because we don't connect A to B. We go along the circle. So that will be the distance. That distance here equals R theta. So you go from here to there. And then likewise, how do you go from the tangential, so that will be called the tangential velocity, to the angular velocity, okay? So very simple, V equals R omega. How can you remember that? Very simple. Rad is a Gauss unit. It does not count when you look at units. So if you have meter per second and you have per second here, that means uh, 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 on the numerator, you need meter. Okay, that's the way you remember. Tangential acceleration, we talked about that in kinematics. It's the, the acceleration along um, per, uh, tangential to the, to the circle, R alpha. Alpha is the angular acceleration, how fast you spin, okay? This is how fast it's spinning. Is that clear? So very quickly, there is a website, uh, it's a YouTube channel actually, and it's called uh, Flipping the Physics. And I saw they even cover MCAT. Um, it's called Flipping the Physics on YouTube. And he, he made this uh, simulation that I find very cool. You see, the, these are people holding hand. Can you see that they cover the same angle, they sweep out the same angle during the same time. Do you agree with that? Yes, right? Every second they're going to cover the same angle, okay? Or they're going to all have the same amount of revolution per minute, okay? However, do they have all the same tangential velocity? No, the one the one outside during the same time is covering more distance. So the tangential velocity will be more. It depends on the radius. That will explain. Now, if all of a sudden they start to run, so they will start to accelerate. Okay, so they push, they push on the ground, the ground, so they will have a tangential acceleration. Is that clear? So it's like I put like uh, someone behind is pushing every single one, so there will be, will be a force tangential to the trajectory, so they're going to speed up. Is that clear? In addition to that, of course, they will need also centripetal acceleration, so they don't go off track. So you can have two accelerations, tangential, centripetal. Is that clear? So super cool website that I have found. Uh, they have... Um, uh, he he has a YouTube channel, okay? And I saw here, for those who are interested, they, he even covered the MCAT, the AP physics and things like this. Okay, let's move on. Okay, what else did I want to tell you? Okay, so that will be rotational dynamics. So someone asked me a question about that. So when something is rotating, let's say a solid object, not only the mass, matters, but the distribution of mass about the axis of rotation, right? Remember that? So for example, very quickly, because it's a nutshell, you don't have to worry about it, okay, for the final, just a nutshell here. You see you have different uh, shapes, and uh, can you tell me which, so comparing here, so you have a hollow cylinder, you have a solid cylinder, uh, we don't care about this one, uh, okay, let's let's care about this one. Between this one, this one, this one, this one. This is a hollow sphere. This is a solid sphere. This is a hoop, and this is a solid cylinder. Which one has the smallest inertia, moment of inertia? They all have m r square. So not only depends on the mass for the rotation, for the laziness, for the resistance at uh, 
increasing the speed or slowing down. It depends on the size, but here you have a coefficient. So which one has the least coefficient? So hollow what? So hollow sphere is two thirds. Um, how much is two thirds? So it's yeah. So it's zero point six. How much is two fifth? One four. So if if you make a race on an inclined plane, all starting at the same time, all rolling down slope, which one will arrive first? Very good, solid, right? And which one will arrive last? The the exactly always behind. So you can do that experiment. You know, you you take a. You can go online to see how how the experiment is done. So you see the distribution of mass matters. So if you multiply by two, the, the same mass, say, multiply by two, the moment of inertia will be multiplied by four, because there is a square. OK, so this is called moment of inertia. And then you have all the others. Um, other physical quantities. I will make a special video about them because it can be quite um, quite complicated. Okay, so we talk already about that. I told you that the angular velocity is a vector. It's given by your right hand. Uh, the momentum is called the angular momentum. It, uh, it's proportional to the velocity. You also have an acceleration. We already talked about that. OK, moving on, moving on, moving on. Uh, oh, uh, I see, see, I have to follow my notes. Another cool, interesting stuff here is here. Here's another example of a lever. Now, the, which one is closer to the fulcrum, the effort or the resistance of the load? Closer. The, yes, you're right. The effort is closer. So does it amplify the force? No, but it amplifies the motion, right? It amplifies the motion. That's a very good exercise because that actually it's like you have a load here that you have to push. That's why if you need to muscle up here, it's a good uh, sport. Uh, okay, that's all I had to say about that. I had to say about it. Da 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 the, the dynamics, rotational dynamics. Because I don't have time, I'm missing one class because because of the pop quiz. But I think pop quiz are uh, very important to help each other out. So I don't I don't cover it, which is good for you because that's why it's not on the final. But I will post a video in my uh, YouTube channel. No, it's important for engineers uh, and, and for physics enthusiasts. OK, so last time we stopped. So you're going to have something like this on, uh, OK, uh, this one. You're going to have something like this, and you're going to have something like that. OK, so we stop here. I'm, I'm not going to solve all in details, but you know, it's just to show you the methodology here. Uh, you, um, what are you given? You are only given here. I don't know what are you given. Um, so you see the free body diagram is already done for you. So the weight is down, of course. You have the normal force, so it's pushing on the fulcrum, so it's going to push back on it. The system is the plank with the lady here, the bolt. The bolt, of course, if there is no bolt here, boom. Uh, you can imagine. 
So the force has to be down. Is that clear? So first thing you decide of a, a fulcrum. And again, I, I told you that before. Uh, For for calculus two, it 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 does it does matters to understand cross product, okay, a li little bit. Uh, so here the the idea is that the axis of rotation does not matter. You can take it wherever it's convenient, and where is it convenient is when you want to get rid of a force in your computation. Let's say you don't know a force, okay? You put your axis of rotation here and you get rid of F1, for example, in your equations because there is no torque. If there is a force applied at the axis of rotation, the torque is zero, okay? So let's do this one here. You see, this one will be uh, making, imagine, imagine you have a, your lower R, Always think of that like this way. So this one will be counterclockwise. This one will be clockwise. Okay, and this is given. This is 530 Newton in magnitude. Okay, so I'm going to do F2 times 1.4 equals 530 times uh, 3.90. Is that clear? I don't need to do all the blah, blah, blah with a, a cross product because look, it's perpendicular. So that there is no worry about that. So this one is easy. So this one, I'm using the sum of the counterclockwise equals the sum of the clockwise. Once you have done that, you need to find F1. So you have two ways to do it, either you, you decide now to place the axis of rotation here. So that's why you get rid of F2 and you only have F1 and W. That's one way. The other way is to say, because it's in equilibrium, everything up equals to everything down. So what is up? You have uh, F2. What is down? Very good, F1 plus uh, the weight. So once you have F2 here, you plug that into here and you solve for F1. Okay, that's one way. The other way will be to take the fulcrum here and to do the computation again. So remember, when you have those kind of problem, equilibrium, if you have pound, it's fine. You can keep pound, okay? Because you will have pound on both sides. Okay, so this, these are the answer. F1 is supposed to be 950 and F2, 1480. Did you find that? Okay, you find that, good. Um, can, can I say it's an equilibrium here? Do you think that the red stick here is gonna be staying? Yeah, that's where the axis of no, so you have here, you apply your force this way and you apply your, the same force there. Is there an equilibrium? No. Okay, so it means yes, up equals down, but the, the torque, it's not a torque equilibrium. So it's not in static equilibrium. So to have a static equilibrium, you need some of the clockwise torque equals some of the clockwise torque, which is the case, but you also need, uh, which is not the case, sorry, but you also need some of up equals some of down and some of right equals some of left, yes? Okay, uh, this problem, it's gonna be something like this for the final, so pay attention. I have my notes all over the place, so that's a problem. It's a problem for me. Okay. Okay, so uh, wait, what? You can think uh, two seconds. Don't you give me the answer right now, right, right away. Which one do you think is the right free body diagram? See, so it, it it's not sleeping. It doesn't sleep. See, 
you can D? Yeah. Actually, it's T because you know you have the the static friction. It's the thing that prevents the the ladder here to slip. Okay. So what's going to happen if you if you climb up the ladder here past the center of mass? Okay. So what's going to happen? The the static friction here is going to increase, 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 and then once it reaches the maximum. The maximum static friction is mu s times the normal. Boom. After that, it's going to slip because kinetic friction takes over. And remember, kinetic friction won't be enough. So for people working you know, in construction, you have very strict rules. I think the distance here has to be uh, one fourth that the height here can check that because otherwise, you you climb up, you're fine, you're fine, you're fine. Boom! Then then there is a lawsuit. So uh, it pushes on the wall. So the wall is pushing back on it. So that will be a normal force. It's uh, pushing here, compressing the ground. The ground is pushing back. You have static friction, and here that will be the center of mass. So you have the weight of of the ladder. Is that clear? Okay, so let's try to do that. Uh, they want you to find uh, R, R uh, as a function of the angle and um, the distance and mu s. So here we, we suppose we suppose that the ladder has no mass, only only the, the guy has a mass or, 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 or the lady and we want to know how far she can go until it start to uh, slip okay and you want the answer you want to find the answer this is the answer okay you see there is no mass here you just have the angle the um, the length of the ladder so the length of the ladder is given and you have r we want to find r so you're going to use three equations to do that you copy me here yes okay so let's do that together because that's that's on the test so you want to understand so don't uh, don't space out so the first thing in physics, you want to do a drawing. So let's do together. Together. So this is this is your ladder here. That's theta. And there is no mass. Okay, we suppose it does not have a mass. Uh, we we know the length. So the length here is L. Okay. What else we know? We know that here. You have someone. Okay, so we can do the three body diagram. So here you have the mass. Okay, I'm going to call that MG. Uh, here you push on the wall, the wall is pushing back. So I'm going to call that N2. Are you with me? So if you have friction, you're going to have another force here, but that's not the case. And here, you want to have the maximum frictional force. Why is that? Because otherwise, we don't have an equation. The only equation we have for static friction involves the maximum one. Once you go over that, you can do an experiment at home, right? But don't don't injure yourself. You can have your uh, ladder on on the wall, and you see it's it's uh, it's holding, and and then you have a bag. If you put the bag around here, it's gonna be stable. If you put the bag over there, boom, it's gonna fall. Um, and then you have the distance. No, okay. So then here you have n one. Uh, what else do we have? That's it. 
So start to lay out the equation. Uh, okay, so you see, I try to make down equals up, height equals left. And the maximum static is going to be mu s times the normal, okay, in magnitude. Do you agree? Okay, let's do it. Okay, so that that distance here, that's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for that distance here. Ah. Because past that distance, the thing is going to slip. Past that distance, I have reached the maximum static force and zoom is, is going to slip. Okay? So I want a relationship between R, L, mu s, and what else? Uh, no, I don't want mg, I want theta. That's what I want. Okay? So the first thing, you take the fulcrum here. Let's take it here. Let's start with this. I'm going to call that my first equation and that's when you're going to find you're going to use you're going to use the definition of torque you're going to see in that case it's going to be easier if you use the lever r okay so l is given and theta is given so let's find the torque due to n2 relative to this axis of rotation of course, it has to be N2, and I'm going to use the definition with the lever R, and I'm going to see why. Well, now, if you want to make things complicated, you, you are welcome to use a different definition, but look, I'm going to extend, okay, I'm going to extend here, and I project the axis of rotation, that's going to be here. That's going to be my lever arm. So this distance here, it's going to be my lever arm. Okay? So that's going to be N2. So that distance here, relative to here, it's going to be sine or cosine? Sine, very good. Sine, theta, R. Are you with me? Pay attention on the test. So the... The other one, the torque relative to the fulcrum due to uh, mg, okay? It's going to be mg, the lever arm, okay? How can I find the lever arm? Do it on your uh, paper. Okay, just draw it. Don't stare. Staring doesn't help. Okay? So it... Look, 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 I extend, I extend, I extend, first thing, then I go back here and I project, so that will be the lever arm here, that here, that distance here, so that distance here is what, cosine or sine? Cos. Cosine, and R, R is actually here, sorry, R is actually L, right? Here I have a L, because that will be the distance here, okay? So that will be my lever arm, and that will be L. So that distance here is R, so it's going to be cosine R. Are you with me? Yes? So that distance here is L, that distance here is R, yes? Okay, and then you imagine you have your lower arm and you see, okay, what's going on? This one make it go clockwise. This one make it go counterclockwise. Now the torque due to N1, it's going to be zero. The torque due to uh, the static friction equals zero. That's the idea because it's... Uh, it's pulling or pushing. So it's like uh, if you want to twist your arm, you push, you push on the, your elbow. Okay, it doesn't help. Yes? 
So if you are solving a problem with torque, imagine your lower arm, the axis of rotation is your elbow. Okay, so I have clockwise here, which is uh, mg cosine theta equals, equals counterclockwise m2 sine theta l, and I'm lost, I'm losing an r. Okay, so that will be my first equation. Okay, just to make sure. Yes, are you with me? Okay, so uh, we, 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 we want to get rid of uh, N2. Okay, so what else can we use as an equation? What else do we have? We have, if, if we do, for example, if we do uh, right equals left. Okay, it's not too hard because it's a review of what we have done before. There is nothing new really under the sun here. Right will be Fs max, yes, which is mu s n1. And left will be N2. Yes? Are you with me? It's not hard, right? Number three, I'm going to have up equals down. So what is up? Up. And yes, N1. N1 is up. What is down? Mg. Yay! Look at that. Okay, so I'm substituting this one into that one. So I'm going to have mu s m g equals n2. Okay, so now I have this equation and that equation. So now you can do it, okay? You, you want to substitute n2 into this equation, yes? So physics is done, okay? It's not physics. It, that's algebra 101. Physics uh, went to take a break. You are on your own, says physics to algebra. Don't stare. Do it. Plug it in. So you have R, M, G, cosine theta equals, very good, yes, mu s m g very good and um, when when you see so which one can be crossed out very good okay and when you have a sign on one side and a cosine on the other side otherwise uh, all of a sudden you start to be each right and you want to i see that people don't like white chocolate I have another package here if you want, uh, if you like, uh, I'll look at it for a little bit. <laughs> I, I don't like white chocolate either. The white chocolate is not really chocolate, it's just sugar. So anyway, um, so you divide by cosine on both sides, yes? So you have R equals mu s tan and right isn't that beautiful huh so um if uh if i went too fast it's okay because it's uh, recorded you have a, a problem like this it's a typical problem to the, the that that problem is very famous okay so you see that you need a, a minimum angle you can do the computation there is a minimum angle um closer to the wall safer it is okay because as long as you are at uh, the standing on the lower part it's fine and then you go up boom, it's gonna it's gonna slip so what what do you think here where is the center of mass here see does it make sense Right. Here is a very easy demo you can do for the center of mass. If you have a broom, you know, a broom, one part is very heavy, right? 
you put your two fingers at the two edge at the two at the two ends of the bone or or the baseball bat. You bring slowly, slowly, slowly your finger together, slowly, 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 and when where well, well they meet, that will be the center of mass. And you see that your finger next to the 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 side with less mass will move very fast. The other one will move slow because there is more mass, so more more friction, and they always meet at the center of mass, and the bone will be in equilibrium on your two fingers. Work the same with a bas uh, baseball bat. You can can do that. So anyway, that will be the center of mass. So here we have another kind of problem because now there is no one climbing, but you you have the um, the mass the mass of the ladder ladder. I don't know the pronunciation. I never know. And uh, so can you find? Can you find the uh, tangent? So you want to find tangent just as a function of theta. So same kind of problem. Quick, quick, quick. So same, same, uh, same kind of problem here. Okay, same kind of problem, except now um, we, we are talking about the mass of the ladder and the center of mass, it's where all everything happens like gravity, gravity is pulling at the center of mass. Okay, so do exactly the same kind of problem, except now that will be the distance L over 2 here. Okay, so do it. So here we call that uh, N2. Okay, and so max the minimum angle. If you if you decrease that angle, he's gonna start to slip. Here you have the maximum static friction, and here you have N1. And here you have um, mg. Yes. So so you see l one equals mg, which makes sense, right? Uh, if you do up equals down. So again, you have N1 equals Mg, okay? And then you have a left equals right. So you have the frictional force equals N2, yes? That by definition, definition is the coefficient times N1 equals N2. So nothing new here. So you have, uh, um, what do we have? Mg, okay, so mu s mg equals N2. Oh, you, you could have done that in your head, right? Because you see N2 equals the frictional force and the frictional force equals mu s N1, but N1 equals mg. Is that right? Yes? Okay. Uh, second step, we take the torque equation. So again, imagine this is your lower arm. Okay, so this one is gonna make a, 
what is that counterclockwise this one is going to be clockwise okay so do it we, we're going to use again the lever arm so the torque due to n2 relative to the fulcrum equals n2 times the lever arm so what is the lever arm you extend yeah it, it's going to be uh, and that will be your lever arm right yes perpendicular distance so that will be that distance here. So that distance here is what? Sine or cosine? Sine, very good. See, so N2, and then it's going to be L sine theta. Do you see? So it's a nice problem because it combines uh, what we have learned. Uh, and then uh, Mg. Okay, so it's going to be Mg lever arm which is mg so you do the same thing you extend extend and then you project project here that will be the lever arm okay project the axis of rotation on the line of action so here you have l over 2 and that's going to be cosine or sine Cosine, are you with me? I didn't lose anyone. Okay, it's not really not hard. Cosine theta. Yes? So then I say the sum of the counterclockwise in magnitude, okay? Otherwise, you have to think clockwise is negative, counterclockwise is positive, and then you have to say the sum of all the torque equals zero, then you have negative and positive. This, this is just working only if you are in equilibrium. Yes? Are you with me? So what do we have? We have uh, N, N2L sine theta equals MGL over 2 cosine theta. Yes? So what, what is it that you can cross out? N? Very good. N2 is mu s m g sine theta equals m g cosine theta. And you see, you go bye bye. Bye bye. See you next time. Okay. So from here, you have um, tan. You divide by cosine both sides equals. 1 over 2. Right. Okay. Do you agree? What's that symbol of the numerator? Which symbol? Uh, in the numerator and before. This one? I don't know about that. Oh. Okay. L, L. And where's the lever for MG? Oh, MG is here. Where's the lever on the... Lever arm, you mean? Yeah. So you, you extend MG and you take the perpendicular distance. You start from here, shoom, perpendicular. So that will be the lever arm. So this is L over 2. This is L over 2 here, and that's my lever arm. And so you use cosine. Why is it? So the whole thing is L, and that distance here is L over 2 because it's the center of mass. It's homogeneous, so the center of mass is at the center, and the weight is always applied at the center of mass. Right? Yes. What? 
the angle, yes. So yeah, yeah, you're right. So then it will be arc tan one over two mu s. You're right. Okay. Okay, so let's take an example. Uh, here. Oh, oh yeah, we didn't do the computation. Uh, mu s mu s is zero point four. So let's do the computation. So it's going to be a tangent and a, a one divided by, open the parenthesis, two times 0 0.4, close the parenthesis, and you have 51, 51. Okay. See next page here. Okay, I didn't lose anyone. So in um, You, if you look at construction, you, you do have some very strict rule. Okay, so it, it means that the angle should be a 75 or larger, and, and that distance here, that distance here should be one fourth of this distance there. One fourth, you, you, that means 75 degrees. Okay, any question? Okay, let's do this one. So you're gonna have one like this. So you're gonna have one ladder, not, not sleeping. I forgot exactly what is in the problem, but one, one like this, and one where you find the tension. So let's do this one because it's a typical problem in uh, statics. So the first thing you want to do, you don't stare. You 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 make the free body diagram. Can you do that? Do the free body diagram. I mean that just means uh, trace trace the force forces acting acting on the beam. I forgot here. Yeah. You're doing it. So the, the system, always think of that, okay? You have an imaginary bag and the system is the beam. Okay? So let's uh, look at the, the falls. What, what is it that we have? Well, good, so you have the tension here. Okay, so wait, the, um, you have the person, so the person is going to apply a weight. You have the weight of the person, because my system is just the beam, right? So I put my beam in my bag, so you have that person here, and the magnitude is 600 newton, 60 kilo. And you also have the weight of, of the beam. And since we suppose it's a homogeneous beam, so it's gonna be at the center, so four meter from here to there, and it's gonna be uh, 200 Newton here. Do you agree? Okay, so but if we have only this, of course, we are in trouble, okay? I will not agree uh, to go on that. Well, 
we have something here. So it's pushing, you can imagine in, in your mind, okay? it's pushing in the wall. So the wall is going to push him back. Do you agree? Yes? Yes. And I'm missing a force here because you have some kind of bolt. Where is that uh, force pointing to? Ah, very good. So it doesn't go in. So I have a force here. So you can call that uh, friction if you want. This one could be called normal. But in statics, they call that RY. And this one is Rx, so it means there is a force here in this direction, which is called, called that R. Is that clear? Uh, that's for those going into civil. You see it has two components here, with R for reaction force. Okay, so let's start. And again, that's going to be on the... Why not? One problem like that. Let's let's take my fulc from here. Let's find T. The goal, the first goal is easy, is to find T. Okay, so do it. Don't wait for me. Let's take the fulc from here and let's apply. What is that? Oh, it's that uh, person. Okay, are you doing it? You see, uh, in that case, I'm not going to do the lower R. You see, it's easy to see that T has two components, perpendicular component and the parallel component. When you imagine you have your lower R and the elbow, is the axis of rotation. So you see, this one is making a counterclockwise. Do you agree? Okay. Imagine this here, This is your lower arm. So that will be clockwise. And that's going to be clockwise. Are you with me? Are you doing it like people are spacing out? Come back. So the sum of the counterclockwise equals the sum of the clockwise, yes? Okay, it's easy, right? Isn't that easy? Yeah? So uh, the torque due to T here, it's going to be perpendicular. Okay. And then what else do I need? I need the distance here. What's the distance between the, the point where the tension is applied and the fulcrum. Eight, very good. Some means plus. So you have this one, which is 600. 600 times, uh, it's given, it's two. That distance here is given two plus uh, 200. Very good, times four. What's your name? Andres. No. Oh, Pablo. I have Andres here. And is that Miguel? Yeah. Yeah, you see, Pablo, Miguel, Andres. Who's that? Uh, uh, Gabby. Show you Okay, so uh, what do you get? I have a question. Uh -huh. How is there a force not against the brick wall if there's no friction? There is because there is a bolt here. It's like a, a nail. Okay. So if, if there is a nail, it's like this. So it's not friction. Yeah, you, you um, it's it's a force pulling up. Uh, so perpendicular here will be sine or cosine. Sine very good. T sine fifty three. 
Okay, so then you can solve for t. t sine 53 equals 10,000, no, 1,000 divided by 8, uh, that's 250. So t equals 250 divided by sine 53. So what do you get? How do you get? 571 for T. Uh, 571? Huh? Wait, why is it 1,000? Why is it 1,000 by 8? Oh, is that 2,000? Yeah. So what do you get for T? Thank you. Sorry. Okay. Two thousand divided by eight. Two thousand divided by eight is still two fifty. Yeah, and then two hundred times two fifty is still two fifty. Okay, so that's two fifty. Okay. Thank you. Yes? And then if you want to find Rx here, okay, you can use uh, right equals left. So you have Rx here. So Rx equals uh, left. Left, do you agree here? Will be T parallel, which is uh, T cosine 53 and then you have up equals down so what is up you have r r y plus t perpendicular equals down 800 newton so you find r x and r and typically in static equilibrium they, they want to find this, this, these are like the components, they want to find the vector r. Okay, so once you find r, x, and r, y, see it's a nice review, then you use Pythagorean theorem to find the vector r. So for the final, you don't want to worry about that, but uh, if, you, if you go in uh, mechanical engineering, you want to worry about it. Uh, is that clear? Okay, that's just a review, right? Right equals left, up equals down. You have the X component and the Y component, so you can find R. Don't, don't erase your USB memory, right? Don't, don't forget how we used to do that. Okay. See, they call that R, because they call that the reaction from the wall on the beam. So you find the X component, you find the Y component, and you use Pythagorean theorem to find the magnitude of R. And that at the end you should uh, you should find this. Okay, any question? Okay, so one one also interesting stuff if you are doing uh, mechanical engineering, they call belt and wrap friction it's used by sailor so imagine you have a pulley or, or um, here it's a pipe and let's say you have a very 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 heavy load and here you you want to pull but you don't have any muscle this is too heavy so it's gonna accelerate down yes it makes sense so there is a trick so you will be able to lift something like 100 times what you can lift. And that way, this way, it's called, it's called belt and wrap friction. So you're gonna go around and around and around and around and around and around. And what's gonna happen is that static friction, it's gonna help you out. And 
as you go around, 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 at some point you will be just in equilibrium thanks to static friction. And then you just have to pull a little bit. And if, let's say like me, I cannot lift more than 10 pounds. All of a sudden you can lift 100 pounds. So what are you using here? You, have, you are using static friction. But you have to go around and around and around. So all those static friction will build, build up. So I refer you to, uh, to this video here. But when you try to lift the weight, well, static friction is working against you? Like, well, the no, no, it's going to help you. Because this one, this one wants to go this way, right? Yeah. So this one wants to sleep. So that's going to be static friction in the other direction. So it's working for you. So if you try to move the weight up, it's going to want to go the other direction. It's static friction. Yeah. No, because you can't. You can't because this one is winning. So we want to know. You you don't let it go. You you go. You don't lift all the way. You just want to hold it oh. in equilibrium. Oh, like yeah. lifting up, lifting weight up. A little bit, like if you lift up, then it will be against you, but in that case, it's going to be with you. Okay, so this one wants to win, so static friction is going to help you. Right, because this one, this one is, is heavier. And uh, actually, you can find that uh, M over M, so let's say Mg over your force will be it's an exponential, then here it will be the static friction, and here that will be the angle. The angle will be how many 2 pi I, I am making. Okay, it's, it's, it's a very advanced, uh, you have to use calculus. So I don't know if it's, but, but I refer you for, uh, for that to this uh, video. It's just a parenthesis. Okay. Um, so I'm um, equilibrium, blah, 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 center of mass, very important. So the center of mass will, uh, will, uh, will be the, the point where gravity is applied, okay? The center of mass only responds, so the center of mass has its own life. It will only respond to exterior force. So for example, um, here I have a website. You see the force here, the force is applied up, vertically up. Do you all agree? It's like giving a pinch up. And it doesn't matter if it's rotating or not rotating, the center of mass will only respond to that net force, exterior net force up. So it doesn't matter if it's rotating or not, the center of mass will follow a straight line, okay, at a constant speed, because there was a force here pushing it up in the first place. So if you have this case, you see that's pushing at the center of mass, so there is no rotation. Here there is a torque, okay, because it's rotating, because it's, it, it, it pushes close to the heavy weight, so it's going to rotate, but the center of mass does not mind. It has its own mind. It will just respond to the outside force. Is that clear? And here you can push it on the other side. It's going to rotate clockwise, but the center of mass still follows a straight line. Is that clear? So we're gonna see that next. Um, so here, if you want to, to, to be stable, you want to make sure that your center of mass, so you can manipulate your center of mass, okay? You can change your uh, configuration, but you want to make sure that the center of mass is, is at a, such a place that gravity has to go through the base, which is the feet in that case. Otherwise, there will be an unbalanced force. So you see here, the, the torque due to the weight is zero, so it's going to be stable. Do you understand? So for example, uh, 
um, if you want to do this demonstration. Okay, this is in yoga. Apparently, some students have told me that it's not hard. I cannot do it, but if you do it, uh, good for you. Uh, the, the, the idea is that you manipulate your center of mass. So your center of mass is here, just above your hand. So that way, the torque, the torque due to this part here, equals to the torque due to that part there, and, and you're not going to fall. Some, someone, some student last semester did that. She claims that it's easy. Okay, I try, didn't work. So uh, here's a demo that you can do, easy to do. You take your baseball bat, you bring your fingers slowly, 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 and where they're gonna meet, that will be the center of mass. So everything happens like the weight of the baseball bat will be applied at that point. Right? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> uh, here's another uh, demonstration you can do. Most of the weight will be in the head of the hammer. So you want to make sure that the suspension point here is just above the center of mass. So that way, there is no torque due to the weight of the hammer. Because you see, gravity, if you extend gravity, is going to go extend through that point here. So that's also another experiment you can do. Uh, yoga, of course, always center of mass. You can manipulate it. So for example, if you bend forward, now the center of mass is here. So that means the center of mass does not need to be part uh, of, of the body, can be outside the body, but you see, it has to be just above the base. Otherwise, you use your equilibrium, right? Um, that's, uh, that's you, you know who it is, yes. I have to blank that word, but he was cheating. You know how he did it, right? He, he had, yes, he, he was hooking his shoes uh, to, to counterbalance the clock, the, the, the torque due to his weight. So let's say the weight is here. So it's gonna be, uh, uh, what is it? A clockwise torque, but here you had some nails. And, and so that will be counterclockwise torque. Okay, even though he was the great Michael Jackson, it doesn't work that way. Okay, you, if, you, if you do that, you will get extra credit as well. Uh, cannot do that either, of course. And so the center of mass here has to be just above the hands, right? Or the base. So that's why the lean tower of Pisa doesn't, doesn't uh, fall because its center of mass goes through its base. And so here you have the, the mass due to this part of the body, making a, a counterclockwise, this one will be clockwise, so it's gonna be in equilibrium, the torque due to the weight equals zero. Is that clear? So that's something that my student, uh, uh, physical therapy, I used to teach physics to them. So women can do that, not men because of the center of mass, because um, women is that they have a lower, lower center of mass, men have a, a higher center of mass. So it means we can do that, but not men. I don't know, you can try if you can do it or not. And this is not possible, okay? You're gonna fall forward because you see the center of mass is here. So the weight does not go through your feet, right? So the center of mass has to do uh, between men and women depends on the hip. Okay, so that's another experiment you can do is to find the center of mass of, um, of a shape. Okay. 
think I have notes everywhere. I don't know where I am. Okay, so. Bless you. So that's me. Hi guys, so that's a very simple demo for the class just to show you how to find a find a center. So that's an experiment that you can do. You take a irrigation. I'm gonna skip here. Yeah. Okay. So you see. You take an irregular shape, so it could be made of cardboard, and you have a string here with a load here. So that means the center of mass is along that line here, okay? Because gravity is pulling, pulling down, okay? So the center of mass has to be along that line. So then you take a marker. Gravity is pulling down here. I hate to hear me. Okay, I'm gonna mute me. And try to make a lie. That's when I realize I have an accent. Okay, I don't hear my accent, but when I hear me, I say, Oh man, I have such an accent. Yeah, you see? You... Okay, and that means the center of mass will be along that line. Okay, so that will be at the intersection. So again, you can take a marker, you can do that with cardboard. Boom. Okay, okay, we understand. Moving on. And then you take another corner and it's gonna meet exactly at the same point. Isn't that interesting? That will be the center of mass. Then you take it. Take that, you put your finger here. Uh, it's going to be an equilibrium. Isn't that beautiful? Right. Okay, so center of mass. Center of mass does not have to be part of the object. It could be outside. Okay, something very interesting for engineers. Um, when something is sum, um, emerged or submerged, in, in a fluid, so you're gonna have what we call the buoyant force, right? That's because the fluid is displaced and there will be a force pushing up, right? Mm -hmm. And that force is called the buoyant force and you have the center of buoyancy, so that's where the force is applied. So the center of buoyancy will be the imaginary center of mass of the water displaced. You see the water displaced? That's going to be the water displaced here. The center of mass for that is here. So that's where the beyond force is applied. And then you have the center of gravity for the boat. Yes? So if the center of gravity is below the center of buoyancy, fine. Do you see? Can you see the torque? Can you see the torque? It's going to bring the boat in the in a good uh, position. Do you see that? Now, if uh, you are not very skilled, what's going to happen? If you put too much load on top of the boat, that means the center of gravity will be above the center of beyond C. And what's going to happen? Not good, right? It happened a lot. So you have to be very careful if um, if you if you go on the boat, you want to have the load at um, at the bottom as as low as possible. A lot of application with the center of mass. So, for example, here uh, in astronomy, astrophysics, you're gonna have two stars orbiting their common center of mass, or you can have a star and a planet, or you can have the Earth and the Moon. They orbit their common center of mass. That will be the center of mass. And how is it defined? M1 R1 equals M2 R2. So that's going to define the center of mass. So if I could put a stick through those two stars, 
And that will be the center of mass. If I put my finger here, or if I, if I wear God, for example, I put my finger over there, then it will be a balance, right? And that's how we find masses of stars. We use the center of mass, so M1, R1 equals M2, R2, but we also use the conservation of momentum. Right? So it means if this one pull on that one, that one is going to pull on it. So one is losing momentum, the other one is gaining momentum. So we use that as well. Plus we use uh, Einstein, not Einstein, Kepler's and um, law fixed by Newton. Just the gravity. Oh, by the way, you're going to have also one problem about that, the, the force of gravity. Remember the force of gravity, like uh, uh, g m1 m2 times the distance square between uh, two planets or a planet? Okay, one problem about that. Just just to make sure you know uh, how to uh, solve that, and you will have one problem about the inverse square law. Remember uh, when we talk about the weight. Or, or uh, the force of gravity, or just gravity itself, when you multiply the distance by 2, gravity, it's an inverse square law, gravity will be divided by 4, right? Inverse square law. If you multiply the distance by 3, the force of gravity, or just gravity, will be divided by 9. Very good, okay? So gravity is an inverse square law, because remember, inverse square rule law, it's like light spreading, spreading out in space. So the area goes with the square of the radius, right? We talk about that. So I just, it was just coming in my mind. So really, I give you give you out, giving you out what's going to be on the quiz. So, so you're going to give us a study guide or some type of. Uh, I will make a video. So you see, you have two um, two stars orbiting their center of mass. That's how it works. So this one is a massive star, it's a blue star, this one is a red star, so smaller star. But you see, you can put an imaginary stick through them, and that will be the center of mass. That's how we define the center of mass, right? So R1, M1 equals R2, M2. Do you see that? And you see the transfer of momentum? Do you see this one? Do you see? It's gaining momentum. This one is losing momentum. It's called the slingshot effect, right? So if you want to go to, I don't know, Saturn, you're going to go next to Venus with the spacecraft, and Venus is going to pull on you. So you you gain momentum. It's like free, free energy. Uh, it doesn't, uh, like, even like uh, Jupiter, Let's say we have Jupiter and the Sun. So the center of mass now is inside the Sun because the Sun has so much mass, but it doesn't matter. It's still the center of mass of the two systems. And you see that the Sun is wobbling because of Jupiter. Do you see that? Is that clear for everyone? So we can actually detect the wobbling of Jupiter, uh, the wobbling of the Sun because of Jupiter. Isn't that cool, right? So very careful if you work as an engineer, don't forget your physics. They, they have forgotten their physics here. So this is a stable equilibrium. So if you take the axis of rotation here, the torque due to the center of gravity will be balanced out by the torque due to the normal. And you see, big distance, small force equals small distance, large force. This is bad. Bad engineer here should be fired. Problem. You see the problem here? Uh, there is an unbalanced 
torque because the center of gravity was here instead. So too much, too much load. Apparently it's because uh, the passenger left the, I don't know what happened, but I have the video. Yeah. Don't take JetBlue, okay? Don't trust them. Weight, weight caused, caused an unusual, unusual sight, sight at New York's JFK Airport, Airport Sunday, Sunday night. night. A plane yeah, at the passenger yeah, gate, look at this, lost yeah. its balance yeah. and tipped yeah. back yeah. so far yeah. its nose yeah. lifted yeah. into the air. Yeah. JetBlue says it happened after passengers started yeah. deplaning from a flight that had just arrived from Barbados. Once the plane leveled out again, passengers were able to get off slowly. Airport officials say there were no reported injuries or disruptions to flight operations. The plane was taken out of service for inspection. Okay, so beware. Okay, uh, interesting about the center of mass. Again, it only responds to exter external force. So in that case, you see the center of mass is gonna follow a projectile motion. So everything happens like you can reduce the center of mass to a, a particle mass, just one point with the mass of the hammer. It doesn't matter if the hammer is making like complex rotation about the center of mass. The center of mass has a mind of its own. The center of mass only responds to the exter exterior force, right? So you can manipulate the center of mass. So you see here that by bringing the legs up, she's manipulating the center of mass. So center of mass would follow a projectile of motion, no matter what, but now she seems to hover above the ground because she changed the distribution of her body above the center of mass. Isn't that cool? But the coolest thing ever, listen to that. Um, do you know this, uh, the high jump? They didn't do it this way back then uh, in the 60s. Okay? They, they had to jump uh, head first, right? And then this guy was a genius. Okay, I always forget his... I know his first name is uh, Dick, Dick something. Um, oh, well. Fosbury. Okay, so do we have a... Yeah, Fosbury. Exactly, thank you. So it was for the Olympics, 19, 1968. He revolutionized the um, high jump for the Olympics. That was done ever before. Why? Because look, the, the center of mass will still follow projectile, you cannot go higher, okay? It's uh, dictated by the law of physics. However, by doing this, right, jumping the head first, he's manipulating the center of mass, right? Because his body can go higher as long as the center of mass still follows your projectile motion. Isn't that amazing? Since then, they all did it. After that, First of all, they make fun of him. Oh, ho, ho, you know what he's doing? That's so weird. Never done that before. But of course he won. So everyone follows along after that. So they call that the Fosbury flop. So I found that so, so interesting. Look, look at him here. And... Um, what is it by... Amazing, revolutionized. 
So yeah, so you, you see this, the center of mass does not have to be inside your body, it can be outside. So the body can jump higher, even though the center of mass has a threshold for the height. Okay, so this is the same idea here. Um, he, he got the, he got um, the, the gold medal, uh, Dick Fosbury, 1968 in Mexico City. 2.24 meters. So it was an Olympic record at the time. Right? Uh, so sadly, he died like recently. He was only 75. 75 is not too old. Okay, another thing interesting about the center of mass is that, as I said, it has a mind of its own. So, for example, when you have a fire war here, you have an explosion. All the little pieces will go their own way. However, in such in such a way, it's such a configuration that the center of mass has to obey free fall. So the center of mass will go up and will go down. So all those little pieces will arrange themselves all around, such as the center of mass has to follow its free fall trajectory. Isn't that crazy? And uh, uh, so if uh, I invite you to look at your book for center of mass problems, because explosion, also interesting. So if you have a toy missile, so I specify the toy missile here, there is a big explosion. You see all the pieces will go in different ways, but in such a way, in such a way that the center of mass will keep doing its thing. It will keep going for a projectile motion. So if you have two pieces here, you need to have two other pieces on the other, uh, on, on the other side. Isn't that interesting? So you have very interesting uh, problems here. So this is, there is an explosion here. One piece goes here. The other piece has to go there in such a way that the center of mass will, will uh, keep being uh, between them. Right, will will be will be along that imaginary trajectory. Huh? Isn't that interesting? So uh, here a lot of problems, those kind of problems here. I think you you Elijah you asked this question last time. See, there is a platform here. There is a person on it, and you have the platform there, and the center of mass is here. Do you agree with me? So the center of mass will be between the, the mass, the mass of the platform and the mass of, of that person here, yes? So you have M1 R1 equals M2 R2. Because there is no external force, because there is no force from outside, because it's an isolated system, the center of mass has a mind of its own. It will only react to exterior force. So it will be staying at the same position. So that's why if you move forward, the platform has to move back backward. Huh? Isn't that cool? So uh, I found a simulation here. So you can do that, right? You can, it would it, uh, happen like if you have um, a kayak, right? You walk on the kayak and the kayak is gonna move. It's gonna move back like this, right? Isn't that interesting? So um, if you like to be challenged, you take your textbook, you have um, uh, challenging problems about the center of mass, like you have a wagon, for example, with an elephant inside and the elephant moves, so the wagon moves back and you, you need to find what's the new position, that kind of uh, problem. So you have an equation, so the equation is given by uh, M1R1 equals M2R2. And you have an equation to find the center of mass, the position of the center of mass relative to the origin. Okay, so it's like a weighted average. 
kind of a gut, uh, gut physics, right? Even if you uh, don't know the definition, it kind of makes sense. So that will be M1 over M1 plus M2 plus, and, and then M2 over M1 plus M2. You see it's a weighted average. So it's like uh, the final grade is 20% of assignment plus 60% of the test. So it's kind of uh, it's the same idea, it's weighted. Do you understand that? Okay, so that will be the total mass. So you have M1 over the total mass here, and here you have M2 over the total mass. Are you with me? So for example, uh, this one, I don't know, try to do this one. So you, you, uh, you start from here, you plug it in. That's all there is, okay? So just plug it in, plug it in. So let, let me know what you get. Four. Who said four? Four. Thomas. I agree with you. You, you agree with Thomas? Yeah. You agree with four? You agree too? Okay, so four, four is the uh, answer. So you, of course you can have a complex problem. So that will be a more complex problem. You can find the center, the center of mass for this system here, you can try. And then you can have much more complex problem, right? So that will be uh, for uh, Rodrigo, right? You can try it without looking at the solution. Uh, it's a very cool calculus here, right? So if you want to try that and try this one. So you see how calculus can be used in that, in that case. Okay, so what, what I remember uh, for, so I will make a video to review for the test, but there will be something like this, where you will be asked to find a tension. There is one problem with the, the what is called the ladder on the wall. I forgot what they asked, but I remember it's with pound. Okay, so if you have pound, don't try to convert because if it's in equilibrium, you have an equal sign. So if you have pound on one side and pound on the other side, that will be fine. You have problems with work, remember? And, and you have to find the components of the force along the displacement. You have the work uh, kinetic energy, work kinetic energy problem. The work, the total work, the network equals the change in kinetic energy. And then remember that when friction is doing work, it's, it's never zero, but it's negative negative okay and you have one problem with um, um, uh, elastic elastic potential energy that that also uh, so don't forget that and um, i wanted to say something else and i forgot and the exam and some conceptual questions uh, yes so anyway i will make a short video you have a lot of tutorials online anyway if you need help uh, you have the links links in uh, canvas the 